everybody at this point has had to deal with noisy recordings, probably caused by cars because cars are impossible to get away from at this point. And that's really, really frustrating because they create this broadband kind of white noise that takes up the whole frequency spectrum. You can't really easily get it out with EQ. That is where RX's denoising modules like voice denoise shine. The way voice denoise works is actually really fascinating to me because it relies on something that re-recording mixers have been doing for a really long time. It just sort of expands upon that. This technique was started sort of using multiband compressors for like the opposite of what they were intended for and pushing down quiet sounds while not touching any of the louder sounds. This again, 64 gate setup is an expansion of that that suits itself really, really well to dialogue denoising specifically. And voice denoise as a module is super easy to use. You've got a couple of set and forget parameters. There's the optimize for dialogue setting, which is great for, again, just sort of spoken word and the normal film sound, vlogging, podcasting, etc. if you're in a slightly noisy environment. Setting it to optimize for music sort of tailors the response of these gates to allow singers that are holding notes for longer to, to just sort of carry those more naturally and it won't try and clamp down and denoise the, the voice as much as it would if you had it on the dialogue setting. That makes it great for obvious reasons in the post-production world, but also in the music world, especially in the home studio environment, where maybe it's not the most pristine condition to record Cord in, but you don't need huge heavy lifting to denoise your audio. Setting the filter type to gentle will go light on a lot of the processing, so you'll get a more natural sound, but it won't be as aggressive in its noise reduction algorithms. Whereas if you set it to surgical, it'll be a lot more intense and precise about how it denoises, but the trade-off is you might introduce some artifacting because it's doing sort of unnatural things to your audio to get it to sound right. From there, I'd actually highly recommend you use this module in adaptive mode, where it just kind of does all the thinking for you. This is one of those times that it's really good at just automatically guessing what you need. The placement of that blue line in the histogram can be controlled with the threshold slider. And effectively what you're telling the module is that anything below that threshold, that blue line, you're gonna consider noise that you want it to try and suppress. And anything that crosses that line, you want it to consider desirable audio that you want it to pass through and let it be heard. The amount of reduction that you want to apply can be adjusted with the reduction slider. And of course, the higher you go, the more you push that, the more unnatural it can start sounding. So I'd recommend using this subtly if you can, but you can push it relatively far and it'll still sound pretty natural. And honestly, that's kind of it. This is a really good module automatically. If you really want to get particular about it, you can uncheck the adaptive box and either select a little bit of noise, just specifically noise in your audio, hit the learn button, and it'll sort of dial in parameters based on that, or you can individually move any of those five threshold points and sort of pick and choose whether you want the lower end of the frequency spectrum or the higher end of the frequency spectrum to be manipulated differently. But honestly, there are, again, major studio level re-recording mixers that'll open this up and run it in adaptive mode subtly into taste and they'll get great results out of it. So if you're looking for a simple, easy, and effective way to clean up noisy audio, again, Voice to Noise is a fantastic module to use and it comes in every iteration of Isotope from elements through standard all the way up to advanced.